Hello and welcome. I'm Dakian. This is the 10th of October 2016. It's the uh, second of these uh, weekly updates that I'm doing during the month of Spookytober, as I'm calling it. Uh, just to sort of play along with the Warboss Tays um, project. And I'm starting out with the finished minis that are kind of the most spooky. These are some Mantic Undead. I painted up these three extra ghouls for my horde of ghouls, which was lacking a few dudes to be a complete horde in, in second edition Kings of War. And, you know, I've painted them to match my old ones, even though today I probably would have added more gore, added some, uh, some more uh, glistening blood effects these are kind of matte but you know i rather than go back and redo all of my old ones i i painted these to match and I, you know i think they came out okay um uh, like it, they're they're part of a huge mass of creatures you're not going to look at them very carefully individually in any case uh, yeah and from the skeleton sprue, I finished these sort of little bonus minis, the, the one coming up out of the grave, and the skeleton dog, I believe it is, uh, with his little dog collar there, in a kind of tarnished metal is what it's supposed to look like. Yeah. That was them. But I did not finish just these five minis this week. No. There's more to come. Just hang on. And so, say hello to the Army of Trees. We have here the 16 dryads from that Sylvaneth uh, starter box set. And Oh, and this here is uh, the Branch Wraith, which is only started. It's just some sloppy base coats that I've laid down uh, just to sort of get started. I'm not sure these are going to be the final colors at all. But um, this is kind of a, a hint of how, how much I thin down my base coats because, as you see, they're very translucent. Thin. Anyway, but these guys are finished. Um... And I, I would say these are not, these are decent quality tabletop. Like I, I, I'd say medium grade tabletop, not, not my highest tabletop standard, but not the sloppiest uh, quickie uh, jobs either. They uh, had a little bit of care put into them, but things like, like this owl, for instance, I didn't, spend a ton of time on that. I just very roughly painted that in. And um, like trying to differentiate between the skeleton and the wood is really difficult. So I, I, I didn't put that much effort into it really. I'm just hoping people can see the, what's what. Uh, or, or for that matter, not a whole lot of work into this little, little imp in the branches here. It's just sort of sitting there. Um, yeah. But they're good enough for, for, for gaming purposes. That's all I require right now. And as I said, uh, hopefully by next week this model will be finished. I have not yet even started the big guy. He's not a uh, priority for me. I, I do want to get around to him eventually just because I don't want the box cluttering up the place <laughs> and lying around here. Um, yeah. But that's them. Let's uh, see what I have that's uh, started prepping. Okay, so let's, let's look at some upcoming stuff that's on my plate. 
First off, we... you know them, you love them. It's the Mantic Skeletons. Now, not all Mantic kits are a hit. I mean, I've heard of some that people tend to dislike, like the Basileans. But they're undead. Most people will generally agree that they're undead are among the best of the lot. And, damn it, I dropped a mini, but hey, it's plastic. Um, and among the undead, I would say the skeletons are really rule the roost. I mean, they, they are really characterful. They have a lot of variety in their sprues. They're simple to paint up. And especially, I already have a paint scheme for these because I've done a unit of them before. And I have a painting process for them in place. I know exactly how to go about doing it. There's no um, thinking or pausing. I just boom, 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 finish them off very quickly. So I can pretty much be sure these will be done. Well, what else we have? I, I, this one I have not previewed at all. I just I was struck by the idea of painting this. This is a vulture demon from Reaper Minchers, which is uh, known as a Vrock in d and I can't use that name because it's copyright or something, I suppose. Um, but it's exactly like a Vrock. And I've painted this model once before in bones, but I wanted to have one in metal because, well, I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison when I'm finished with this one and, and that will might perhaps tell you why. Now, I decided I primed the wings separately and we'll attach them later because the way they attach it, yeah, it, it, it I, I, I'm going to paint at least the body and the underside of the wings, then attach the wings and I think paint the top side with them attached. That, that will be fine. Um, and the final bits and bobs that I have ready to go are this set from the Tomb of Horrors. I've primed these white, and <clears throat> I decided not to build up the thickness of the bases because measuring them, uh, you know, they look a bit thin, but measuring them, they're not that much thinner than a standard plastic base. So they, um, yeah. They'll do. That this is so. This is the Demilish Asterirak, and this is the same dude, but in kind of mummy form. And very nicely posed, very nicely sculpted. These, they're in resin, which. Um, it's kind of a medium quality resin. It's a resin, it's much better than Failcast. It's not as crumbly. And it does hold detail really, really well. However, it is also more fragile than, for example, the metal. For example, with this model. So, this was a three piece. The base was one piece, the body and everything was one piece. and. The two forearms and the holy symbol were one piece that uh, attached to the sort of arm stumps that are part of the body. However, as I was cutting it off the sprue, very, very carefully, mind you, as being ex as careful as you could possibly be, this piece broke off between the two hands. I don't know if you can tell, but I've tried to piece it together and it's there's a slight angle now to it. It's not straight. I could not get it exact because I've had to sort of, you know, very carefully um, super glue the whole thing together. Um, it was flimsy. That that there was a weak point there in the uh, the symbol thing. Another thing that always gets a bit wonky when you have this kind of resin is swords and scabbards. Like this scabbard here, I, I have straightened it with some hot water, but because it was even more curvy before, but it's not 
per definitely not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. And especially this, the blade for the fighter here, you can see there from this angle, it's slightly bent. It looks okay like this or straight on like this, but mm -hmm. And finally, I there is a piece of cloak that goes with this guy, and I spent probably a good half hour trying to figure out how to attach because it looks like it might attach something like this, but that doesn't make any sense. And, you know, just looking how this piece would connect up here, because there's clearly, I mean, this this chunk of material here isn't supposed to be part of the shield. It's it's a connection for something else. Eventually, I hit upon the idea that it's supposed to attach something like like this, or rather, like that. Okay, so it's it's coming out from underneath the shield and flaring out. However, if I attach that before painting, it becomes really, really hard to get at his uh, his undercarriage, so to speak. You know, the backs of the legs and, and, and the like. So I decided to leave it off for the time being, and I'll glue it on after at least painting everything below here. Not sure if I'll paint the shield first, but yeah, no, I'll have, no, uh, probably not. You know, part way through painting, I will try to glue this piece on, and yeah, I it's it's just super glue along this along a line like this. Nothing else, no pegs, nothing to hold it on in place. It's gonna be very fragile, but yeah, what can you do? That's the way it's sculpted. So. Those were the works in progress. Do I have any plans for the future? We will find out. So, continuing on with more spooky stuff. What could be more spooky than the spooky Santas? Uh, this, this is a set of minis I got from a company called Casting Room Miniatures, which is an offshoot of uh, the War Games Foundry. It's a set of, let's see, one guy who's just a fat dude with a big bell, one who's got a sort of Plague Doctor mask on. That's creepy. Uh, one who is, oh, he, he belongs with this piece. He I think he's supposed to be climbing a roof. It, the pegs don't quite line up really, but you know, I can make it work. And finally, this little thing. Which I don't know, I'm not sure if there's a Santa. Is this the figure here in the front? It's like a little Christmas tree and a pile of presents. I'm not supposed sure if that's supposed to be a, a guy or just a doll or something, but oh well. Really disturbing and creepy in any case. <laughs> uh, I, I've also picked out from all of my unpainted stuff this Witch Coven by Reaper. More witches, you know, I just painted a witch uh, just recently, but you can never have too many wish witches. And there's a cauldron here as well. which might be on its own base, I think, in this case. So it can, yeah, I think, I think it's, it's a, if it's a coven, then all three of them should be um, uh, cooperating on this brew. So not, un unlike the previous witch, which I painted on a scenic base with both the witch and the cauldron, the pot on the same base, I think I'll put this one on a, its own base. And finally, um, I, I rummaged through and found some more Frostgrave minis that I had lying around. These are from the Thought of the Lich Lord expansion. This is the Necromancer Wizard and his Apprentice, and also the Lich Lord 
itself. So, these are pretty cool. Now, this is a lot of minis. I'm not, I'm, we'll see. It kind of depends on how much of the previously prepped stuff I get done. How many of these I decide to prep for next week. Um, mm, gotta be careful with the staff. It's, yeah, I'll do that off camera. Um, but, you know, there, there's a lot of stuff to choose from, and at least some of this will get started. So, what else is going on? Oh, I'm catching up a bit again. And this is because this week's arrivals are not miniatures, they're terrain. They are, this is from a um, Kickstarter, and it is um, the Victorian steampunk Kickstarter by uh, Renaissance, Renaissance Miniatures. And as you can see, it's passing your car, what's this? Well, it's, it's a train car. This is MDF, uh, mostly vehicles that I got. This is the passenger car, and there's a coal car. Uh, there's, I believe, two of them. I, see, I think there's two sprues, which I presume build one car, train car each, because, uh, yeah, because that's what the Kickstarter specified that I should get one passenger car and two coal cars. There's more bits to the passenger car, somehow. But, yeah, that's probably because the coal car is open, topped so they don't need as many parts. Um, I also added some train track to it. A little piece of road, which just tiled stone. And there was some stretch goal, well, bonus stuff that everybody got, whether they wanted to or not. There's a handsome cab and an outhouse. Now, I have zero experience with building MDF stuff, so I'm kind of curious to how this will work and how you go about painting it, if you just use normal acrylics or what. Um, now, there's no build instructions included, but there's a link here to their website where they will have build instructions, so that, that should work fine, I hope. And I'm not going to get around to this anytime soon because... I, of course, with Victorian steampunk, I got it because of Malifaux. And I'm sort of taking a break from playing Malifaux at the moment. I, I'm not currently engaged in any uh, gaming in that capacity. So this will be put to one side for, for the time being, and I'll get back to it uh, sometime in the future. Sometime next year, I hope. Anyway, this was a look at the current state of affairs this Monday. I hope you had a good time if you followed this all the way to the end. And you can click the like button, you can subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so, and leave a comment what you thought about it. And I will see you next week. Dakiya, signing off.